Hi there, I'm Christian, and in this PC Answers tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the internal drive on your laptop. Now, there's two reasons why you might want to do this, and the first of these is, is storage, obviously. Um, if you have a laptop that's just, say, two years old, you're probably lumbered with a 40 or 80 gigabyte drive, and with all your photos and, and videos these days, you'll want a much higher capacity than that. But the second reason, of course, is speed. Now, this is something that uh, laptop drives in particular uh, suffer from. Your average desktop drive uh, is, is often 7200 RPM, which is fine. Um, the 10,000 RPM ones are, are quite expensive. But uh, laptop drives, and, and those in uh, the smaller ones, netbooks, are often only 4200 or 5400. But you can pick up a 7200 drive, which is uh, what we're demonstrating here. And the one we're using today is actually a 320 gigabyte drive uh, to go with that speed. So that's one that uh, we'll be uh, putting in in just a second. If you've bought a, a laptop recently, uh, or an, a netbook, you might be lucky enough to have a, a higher capacity. But it's, it's, it's worth investigating what speed you're getting, especially if you're looking to upgrade to Vista or Windows 7 when uh, that comes out in a few months' time. As that extra bit of speed performance, particularly when you're running off a battery, uh, has some, some real benefits in, in terms of speed there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, use this uh, laptop. It's an Asus 15.4-inch. Uh, um, and typically, it has a handy slot at the back, which just unscrews by uh, just uh, two or three screws. Um, and the configuration of most uh, laptops of this size are that uh, the panel is, is easy to slide off, and it's just a few screws that hold it in. And unlike your average uh, desktop, there's no uh, big cables involved at all. It's just a, a simple sort of slot mechanism. So the laptop we're using here is a typical 15.4-inch uh, uh, device um, and on the back here um, you can see it's just a small compartment uh, which houses the entire uh, drive itself um, and it's just two screws on this particular model uh, that holds it in. Now they're quite deep so you will need uh, a screwdriver that's got quite a long uh, section to it so if you've got a, a, a short sort of pocket screwdriver it might not be particularly useful. So we've got those two uh, small screws up now and it's a, simply a pop out device. And now you can see the actual uh, chassis that uh, holds the drive in place. Now just like a desktop drive, it's uh, a series of screws that actually hold that uh, in its casing. Um, that's simply to protect the drive uh, from vibration. Uh, luckily these screws are much shorter and come out in one, one go. Now, each laptop will be slightly different, but uh, they, they quite often have a little plastic flap here, which is simply to pull that piece of metal out in one go. And here we are. Here's the uh, 2.5-inch laptop drive. And as you can see, it's actually upside down. That's the way they uh, usually go in a laptop. Um, it's entirely cableless, unlike your usual SATA uh, disk drive in your desktop. Um, and just like these, these panels, it's a simple push to actually take that out. And as you can see, it's the uh, simple SATA slot interface there uh, for these drives. And the drive we've got here, as I said, is a 7200 RPM drive, so it's much faster uh, than the uh, original drive, and it's a 320 gigabyte capacity. This is the uh, Western Digital Scorpio. You can pick these up for about 50 pounds. Again, turn it over, and it will slide upside down, back into position, and give it a good push, and you'll, you'll know that it won't go any further when it's like that. Uh, take the metal uh, mounting case again, and simply slide back, and make sure that the four holes line up exactly, and now you'll be able to uh, screw these, hold these screws back in. So we're just finishing off the, the last screw there. Um, and just check that's that's firm in its casing, and there we are. That is the new drive installed. It will probably be uh, blank if you've just bought it, so you'll have to uh, uh, install Windows. Now, some motherboards uh, of some particular laptops will actually recognise the new hardware 
um, recognise its different speed and capacity and will actually have a notification when you start the machine uh, before you install Windows um, that there's been a hardware change. But it should just ask you to uh, uh, press an F key uh, to uh, continue to uh, install or uh, run whatever software you want.